Hello everyone and welcome to the CircuitPython weekly meeting for May 9th, 2022. It's the time of week that we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and Adafruit sponsors me to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is sponsored primarily by Adafruit. To support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join us anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is also a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document after the meeting contains timestamps, so you can use it to view only the parts of the video that interest you the most. And after each meeting, we will post a link to the next meeting's notes in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest note stock so you can add your notes for the following meeting anytime during the week. And just a reminder, if you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can absolutely leave your hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. The meeting is held in five parts. After this introduction, the, we go to community news and take a look at the CircuitPython and Python on Hardware um, newsletter preview. Next up after that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, where we take a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're individually up to. Up after that is our first round robin section, Hug Reports, an opportunity for you to highlight the good things that folks are doing and take the time to recognize awesome folks in our community. Next up after that is Status Updates. In this round robin section, we have an opportunity to sync up on what everybody's up to. Take a couple of minutes to tell us what you've been doing since we last uh, talked, as well as what you'll be up to over the next week or until the next meeting. And then the last part, if we need it, is called In the Weeds. This is an opportunity for lo more long-term discussion, and this can either be something that uh, you've been itching to talk about all week or something that comes out of status updates. Uh, either way, we take that section in the order it is in the document, and we prefer that you add your topics as soon as you become aware of them. And that covers how the meeting will go. I am going to start giving you a preview of the newsletter. So first up, nine years of MicroPython contributions. Uh, Matt Torini used Gorse to look at the development history of MicroPython over its nine year history. And there is a link in the notes document to a YouTube video uh, where you can see that. And um, if somebody can paste these links into the channel as well. That would be super cool. Next up, the RISC-V CEO seeks world domination by winning over the likes of Intel. The CEO of RISC-V's governing body says she wants nothing less than world domination for the rising open source processor technology. But to do that, the nonprofit needs buy-in from a variety of organizations, even those steeped in dominant proprietary architectures, such as x86 giant Intel. RISC-V has more than 2,400 members, including companies, universities, and government-related entities. And next up in MicroPython and RISC-V news, there is a new MicroPython port for the WCH CH32V307 microcontroller. It has been uh, posted on GitHub, and there is also a link to our blog entry about it, so check that out. And more MicroPython adjacent news. The chip shortage is going on, and we've got this little uh, series on YouTube called Chip Shortage. It's got a nice little jingle, but it's a serious topic. Anyway, last week's uh, subject was the STM32F405 microcontroller, which is used on MicroPython's Pi board, as well as other Python on microcontroller projects. And this video is basically an ask to ST for them to supply MicroPython with the quantities that they need of this crucial part. Now the fun stuff. Um, if you can make projects during the chip shortage, we've got a couple of Star Wars projects because that is uh, in honor of May the 4th and I guess also Revenge of the 6th. 
So first up, a Death Star animation in CircuitPython on a round LCD driven by the Adafruit Cutie Pie. That is from Twitter, our own Toddbot. And I think this is another Toddbot. Also for Star Wars Day, I made a silly targeting computer gizmo in CircuitPython. This one uses the ESP32-S2 TFT feather, but can be adapted to other CircuitPython capable boards. And there are a bunch more projects in the newsletter, so we are, of course, inviting you to sign up for it. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. We always aim to highlight the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including Python, CircuitPython, and MicroPython developments. To contribute to your own project or news, edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag your tweets with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And of course, to subscribe to the newsletter, uh, head right now to adafruitdaily.com and on the front page you will find some links to subscribe. If you do it right now at the time of recording, you can get the newsletter tomorrow. And that rounds it up for the preview of the newsletter. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Thanks to our very own Adabot, we gather statistics over the previous seven days and then break it down a little bit. So I will take the overall section in which we had 42 pull requests merged from 23 authors. I'm pretty sure 23 authors is a record or a near record, and Katni's going to tell us a little more about why that is uh, up later. In terms of reviewers, we had 10 reviewers, um, a lot of the usual suspects, but uh, particularly thank you to Tectric, I think, who picked up some of this extra load. And issues-wise, we saw 35 issues closed by 14 people and 21 open by 17 people. So we've got good activity on both sides and we managed to decrease our overall number of issues, which is great. And with that, I will pass the talking stick to Dan to tell us what is going on in the core of CircuitPython. Thank you, Dan. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Uh, so in the past week, we've had 18 pull requests merged from nine authors. Um, DuPont, GU, and Bill Van Leeuwen 424 are new. Thank you very much, and M. Wislead submitted their second one in only two weeks. Thank you also. Uh, there were five re reviewers. Uh, thanks to everyone, including Dave Putz, who is keeping a good idea mm -hmm. eye, eye on things. There are 18 open pull requests. A bunch of these are either drafts or being held for 800. Um, we're not really behind. We're, they're, they're all, many of them are in abeyance awaiting uh, something else. There were 17 closed issues by two people and seven opened by five people. So that's a nice decrease in the number of closed issues in the core. There are now 519 open issues in the core. Um, in terms of milestones, the 730 milestone has only four open issues. Three of those are actual bugs. The other is housekeeping. So uh, we're getting down to the wire on uh, getting toward a release candidate for 7.3.0, which is great. Um, for 7xx in general, there are 28 issues we'd hope to finish before the end of 7. And there are, eight issue, there are 12 issues for 8.0.0, which we will not work on until we start to work on 8.0.0. Um, I'll stop there. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Dan. And uh, in the near future, that section will go back to Scott. So we're looking forward to that, but uh, letting him spin up a little bit slowly. With that, I will invite Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Jeff. So this section covers all the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras, such as the community bundle and our cookie cutter. We had 22 pull requests merged from 15 different authors. A number of these folks are new, and I will talk about them in just a few minutes. Uh, we had seven reviewers as well, and thank you to all of our reviewers for facilitating um, all of our new contributors. Uh, we had, uh, like I said, 22 pull requests merged, leaving us with 29 open pull requests. We had 15 closed issues by 11 people and 11 opened by 11 people, so we are down a tiny bit there, leaving us with 635 open issues across all those repositories. Um, 
uh, 194 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, or you want to contribute documentation, um, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including all the a list of all the available issues, which if you're new to everything, you can check out the good first issues. Uh, we also have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. So don't let that part intimidate you. And uh, you can also search for bug or enhancement if you're looking for something a little more complicated. Um, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries, but there were a number of updated libraries, which I will not read off. And I want to thank the following folks for all their work at the PyCon US 2022 CircuitPython sprints. And these are the new folks that I was referring to earlier in terms of contributors. A word for that, Jay Cerise, Matt Land, Dov Clark, RM Blau, Sabadam32, KT Kinsey37, and Ryan S. Keith. Between them, they submitted 14 pull requests, which I've listed below. And while many ended up choosing sort of hard mode libraries to work with, everyone was persistent and persevered. Everyone said they felt like they learned something and accomplished something, which is really the most impar important part of it to me. Um, so I was really glad to hear that. And I was a little concerned as things were going because of the fact that they coincidentally picked libraries that were much harder to work with. Um, I, I was concerned that their experience wouldn't be as positive as it might have been with something that was a little easier to accomplish, but it was very clear that these folks were uh, interested in challenges and ended up uh, coming out very well in the end. So uh, I hope to see some submissions from these folks again in the future, but I really appreciate um, everything they did during the sprints. And that's what I've got. Thank you, Kenny. I'm still a little jealous I could not stick around for the sprints. It sounds like it was a very good time. It um, was pretty excellent. Anyway, then to round out this section, uh, Maker Melissa, would you tell us what is up with Blinka? Hello, yes. Um, so this, uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And uh, this week we had two pull requests merged by two authors and two reviewers. There are currently five open pull requests. There were three closed issues by two people and three open by two people, leaving a net of 77 open issues. There were 9, 000, uh, yeah, 9,417 Pie Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 88 boards. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, so next up is Hug Reports. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is the moment that we take to appreciate people uh, in the community around us and beyond. And it is done as a round robin. So I will start and then I will go through the rest of the notes um, in the order that they are in the document. Um, so I was a little bit disorganized as I prepared for the meeting. So all I have for y'all is a group hug. And then I have notes from Ask Patrick W. Um, who writes, thanks to Purples and Naradoc for their input and guidance on my Wemos C3 new board pull request, which is ready for review. And there is a link in the notes document. And next up, what is up, Dan? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm spacing out. Um, thanks to Katni and you, Jeff, Maker Melissa, Crayola, and Tectric for a fantastic CircuitPython presence at PyCon. Um, worked out really well. Um, thanks to um, O Marshmallow from Espressif for a fix for an ESP32 um, I2C, I2C delay issue. They were very helpful in working with me, uh, going back and forth with test programs, and they found a nice found a, a, an obvious, not an obvious bug, but a clear bug. Um, thanks to Dave Putz for continuing to be an expert in Pulse.io, reviewing and fixing things related to that. That's, that's great. It takes a load off of uh, us core developers. And thanks to you, Jeff, for lots of reviews in the past week when you came back uh, uh, with all throttles running from PyCon. And thank and welcome back to Scott. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm going to read notes from David, and then it will be Foamy Guy up after that. Uh, David has a hug for Tammy Makes Things for an interesting stream and professional Python. 
All right, and Foamy Guy has a whole list. I can see it right here. All right, yep. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, first up, Tammy makes things. Uh, who pointed me towards a uh, feature inside PyCharm called Scopes, which turned out to be the exact uh, thing that I was just wishing that I had. It basically kind of lets you hide uh, all but the most important stuff in a project um, when you sit down to work on a given thing. So that's really nice. Um, to Warrior of Wire uh, for guidance and helping me make some changes to Vector I/O inside the core. Uh, Paul SK for sharing a, um, a more advanced tab layout example uh, over on the Discord, um, which has uh, multiple different data sources to show on the different tabs. And it also has a hot plug functionality for Stemma sensors. So you can kind of plug and unplug, and it will notice and update the, uh, the display accordingly. Um, to reiterate uh, what Katni said, all of our new folks um, that did contribute during PyCon, it's, uh, it is all the same list of names here, so I'll skip reading the names, the same ones um, that Katni read. But I definitely appreciate all of these folks and uh, had a great time uh, getting to work alongside some of them uh, to do the reviews and such. Um, to go along with those folks at, at PyCon, uh, thank you to Tectric for helping do the reviews, uh, as well as submitting some uh, PRs of his own. Uh, thank you to Naradoc, who also helped with some of the reviews and uh, came up with a potential solution to save some space on CPX builds, um, which was kind of tied to one of those uh, PyCon PRs. And then uh, lastly, thank you, of course, to Katni and Maker Melissa for being present there uh, and just um, interacting with folks and helping get people involved and uh, contributing and playing around with CircuitPython. Thanks. Thank you. And next, with a huge list of things to be thankful for, is Katni. Yep, here I am. Um, so a huge hug to everyone who attended the PyCon US 2022 Open Spaces and Sprints. Uh, thank you for joining us to learn and contribute. Special thanks to all the folks I listed off in the State of the Library section earlier in this meeting for contributing PRs from the Sprints. Uh, to PyCon US 2022 itself for all the effort put into keeping attendees safe to the best of their ability. My experience was much more amazing because I at least felt safe in the conference space. Uh, to Lukash Langa for an excellent keynote, as well as a couple of nice discussions, one of them to answer a question about Black with a great explanation as to the why. To all my old friends, all my new friends, and other amazing folks I met while I was attending the conference, thank you for helping make the Python community so great. To Foamy Guy for being available with help with the type hint PRs at the sprints. A few folks watched your live stream during the sprints and found it super helpful. I couldn't have facilitated the sprints without you. Uh, Tectric for coming to visit us at PyCon. It was lovely to meet you and spend time with you. To Naradoc, Tectric, and Dan H for helping out in the CircuitPython dev channel during sprints. Again, I would have struggled to handle some of the questions without the three of you helping as well. Um, I think I said this before, but uh, another thanks to Keith the EE for testing, updating, removing incompatible changes, and ensuring that every example possible from PyCon 2019 was available to folks for PyCon 2022 to use on their Circuit Playground Blue Fruits. I couldn't have hosted the open spaces without this help. To Foamy Guy for putting together a list of the new authors from the sprints and the PRs they submitted. To Tectric for putting together a script to update the pre-commit config, pre config.yaml file across the libraries. And a group hug to the community for being so welcoming and amazing to the new folks who joined us over the last week and a half at PyCon. Many folks commented on how great the community was as a new person. And finally, another group hug to anyone I missed. Thank you so much, Katni. And next up is Liz. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to do a hug report for Scott, returning from parental leave, um, to Jeff for an excellent PyCon blog post, and also I hope you enjoy your upcoming trip. Um, delayed hug report I missed last week um, to be able to share. Uh, to Foamy Guy for excellent streams in general, but also the one two weeks ago where your code was lost. You handled that so well live, and it was just a very reliable moment. I think a good moment for everyone in the community. Um, to Katni for creating the VL53 L4CD fritzing object and for the upcoming fritzing training. Um, and to Katni and Maker Melissa for all the excellent work at PyCon. And group hug to the community. All right. Thank and you, Liz. Oh, were you done? I was just saying that's it. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, uh, next up is Maker Melissa. And then Tammy makes things. Hello. Um, so I wanted to start out with giving a hug report to everyone who attended PyCon US that I got to meet. 
Um, everyone who kept the usual things going well is at PyCon. Uh, you, Jeff, for your PyCon write-up. Also, it was really great to meet you. Thank you. In person. And uh, a welcome back to Scott and a group hug to everyone else. All right. Uh, next up, Tammy. Tammy makes things. Hi. So um, sort of an on-the-fly group hug that I forgot to put in the doc for everybody who attended PyCon. I'm sorry I missed it, and hopefully I'll get to be there next year and meet some of you. And then a group hug to the community. Thank you. And now, oh, not quite rounding out the section, is Scott. Hi, Scott. Long time no see. Hello. Yeah. So um, for those uh, who missed it, I've been out the last six weeks doing the first portion of my parental leave. Um, so obviously the first hug report goes to my partner uh, in crime, uh, Becca Minigree is her handle on GitHub. Uh, who did an awesome job giving birth to our son, Ari, on March 25th. So uh, she's been doing a great job uh, since then as well, of course. Um, hug, hugs also to Becca's family and my family, who have supported us through these last last weeks and that really helped us get through the the first few weeks are, are the toughest, uh, or they're a huge transition, so they helped get through that. Uh, thanks to Lamore and Phil for supporting me through uh, the paternity leave. So I, they they did pay for this stint, uh, which is awesome. Um, and everybody should have lots of pater paternity leave and maternity leave because it's important. Um, so thanks to Dan, Katney, Jeff, and Tim for running the meeting without me. Um, thanks to for Tim uh, continuing the deep dives while I'm out and getting uh, and while I'm getting settled too. We'll have to have some discussion about what the plan is going forwards but um i don't <laughs> i literally like barely opened my email until this morning so i'm i'm very much ramping up uh and then lastly uh everyone in the circuit python community uh i did listen to the meeting from last week while i was i, I changed a diaper during it and it's just been amazing to me the little lurking that i've done just how much uh things have been growing and continuing and pycon was Sounds like it was awesome, too. So just thank you to everybody. Um, it's really cool to see that CircuitPython is bigger and and better even without me. So thank you all. All right. Thank you, Scott. It's good to have you back. And last up, I have some notes from Tectric. So Tectric, tech, ugh, Tectric writes, a hug to Deshipu and Jepler for help thoroughly answering my CircuitPython question related to PRs. To Jepler again for all the updates and guides on the RP2040 PIO. Reading guides and PRs has been instrumental in using it for my job. I'd love to know more. Uh, hug to Sick, Sick R. Uh, I'm sorry if that uh, name was butchered. For submitting a PR to my CircuitPython CSV library in the community bundle to add an example. I'm thrilled it has been useful to others. Uh, a hug for Foamy Guy for taking on and getting through a ton of PRs from PyCon, as well as offering to help take a look at what I'm reviewing now. A hug to Katni for providing fun library infrastructure challenges to solve, always with clear instruction and examples to make it easy to accomplish. Another hug to Katni and also to Maker Melissa for facilitating the sprint for facilitating the sprints at PyCon. And everyone who submitted a PR for the PyCon sprints, they were a ton of fun to review and everyone was super awesome to work with. And last up is a group hug. And that leads us to the end of that section and to the beginning of status updates in which I have to move mine to the top of the list since I'm the host. All right, so with status updates, we want to hear about what you've been up to since we last chatted and what you hope to get up to in the immediate future. And I will start out. So the last week I continued on the background write for the RP2 state machine. I wrote some additional examples and I've been documenting those within the learn system in pages that will be published soon. Um, so this week I'm just wrapping up getting those items documented on learn. And I am waited excitedly for the Event Horizon Telescope press conference on May the 12th. Uh, it is likely that they will show us the first picture of the black hole at the center of our own galaxy. Um, and I'm trying not to leave too many loose ends or start anything too involved because soon I am out from May 14th to June 26th. Um, we will be taking an international trip and crossing our fingers that everything goes 
well and smoothly. And I look forward to catching up with you people. It'll basically be July when I talk to you next, though. So, uh, yeah, that's what is up for me. And next up is Dan. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jeff. So, uh, over the weekend, I incorporated a fix from Espressif for um, I2C issues uh, on the ESP32, various ESP32 uh, chips. I'm investigating uh, another I2C issue, which might have to do with repeated start or um, clock stretching on the ESP32 S3. Um, we, as I mentioned, we only have a few bugs left before 730 RC0, the RC0 release, so we hope to do something with those soon. And I'm working on a uh, test suite to test the basic functionality of a CircuitPython port, which will involve a lot of manual checking, but try to automate it as much of that as possible. That's in my, um, I'll put a link in, it's, if, you, if you're interested in it, uh, it's, in, it's in my uh, collection of repos right now. Okay. All right, thank you. Next up, I have a number of items to read. So first, uh, in document order, David writes, finished a working version of my texture injector for Game Maker Garage, the Switch game. And there's a link to Twitter that it looks like somebody maybe will paste into Discord. Otherwise, check the notes doc. Uh, Anic Data writes, I'll be scarce on and off through the summer due to extra projects, events, and travel, focusing on Discord support, GitHub, and maybe small PRs. Ask Patrick W writes, past me, my Wemos C3 new board PR is ready for review. And future me, plan to make notes for Foamy Guy's deep dive last week. I'm going to be remote slash offline for the next month on an epic camping Airbnb road trip in the Southwest US. So if I seem gone, I'm only gone temporarily. I'm bringing the Wemos board with me so I can work that PR if needed. I'm very jealous, I love the Southwest. All right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, thanks Jeff. Um, so uh, over the past week or so, I've been uh, doing lots of testing and reviewing of the PRs, mostly uh, that came in through uh, PyCon last weekend, uh, or, or the weekend before at this point. Uh, I don't know, whenever that was. Um, I will be doing some more testing on that stuff this afternoon. I've been uh, making my next pass through all of those today, and I have a couple lined up to test this afternoon. If anybody is particularly interested, I'll be playing with the um, RFM radios, RFM 9X radios, and also a fan driver. Um, and I'll probably turn the stream on for a bit this afternoon while I work on that stuff. A um, couple other things I did get done is I finished up the touch interaction for the tab layout uh, widget that I've been working on for Display.io. Uh, and I got the PR created for that, so that's out there uh, now. I have a item to follow up on uh, on that, but the uh, the initial code is in and good finally, so that's exciting. Um, and then uh, the other thing I kind of got into this week was back into the core uh, vector IO, uh, trying to make the shapes be able to be hidden uh, when the group that they're inside of gets hidden. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of changes in there to make that work. Um, and I had some success on that this week, so that was exciting as well. Uh, all right, thanks. All right, up next is Katni, and then maker Melissa. Hello. So last week I got home from PyCon US 2022 on Wednesday. A short recap, uh, I attended the Education Summit on Thursday before the conference. I gave a talk called Simplicity and Fun Learning with CircuitPython. Uh, there's a link in the notes to the slides. I also did mini sprints, which was an intro to CircuitPython uh, on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit. It's same as open spaces, ba basically, but shorter. During the conference, I hosted three open spaces with uh, Jeff and Melissa, uh, which is an introduction to Circuit Python on the Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Um, scheduled two hours instead of one at the excellent suggestion of a community member ahead of time. Uh, they were well attended, even relative to other open spaces. We were running out of room. There were 36 chairs in the room, according to Jeff, and we gave up our own seats for attendees to make space for everyone. Two of the attendees of open spaces wrote games for the Circuit Playground Bluefruit and submitted them to the PyCon 2022 repo, and there is a link to those examples in the notes. Um, the sprints, I hosted two days, which was after the conference, Monday and Tuesday. And uh, got we received 14 PRs from eight new authors. Um, everyone felt like they learned a lot and accomplished something. 
Many attended the first day, less on the second day, which is expected. And even though folks chose hard mode libraries, they all persisted, persevered, and succeeded. Um, as for overall, I saw friends for the first time in three years, and it was more needed than I realized. Made new friends, met a bunch of amazing new people. I felt like I was able to introduce many people to CircuitPython, get them interested, and provide some of them with hardware to continue at home. Uh, after I got home, I got caught up from being gone. I did some PyLeap testing, and I closed out a bunch of guide feedback. This week, I will be teaching Liz how to create fritzing objects. Sorry, ahead of time. Uh, doing more guide feedback, more PyLeap testing, helping Jeff with getting his library into the bundle, and writing a guide page on the differences between uh, MPy, Py, and Frozen modules um, for libraries. Uh, the initial plan for it was to explain Frozen libraries, but um, after discussion, uh, it actually makes more sense to explain all three of the different setups and how to navigate them and how to uh, use them and what they're for. And that, that is a point of confusion for a lot of people and a guide page would be excellent. Um, and the original purpose was to be able to um, add a link on circuitpython.org to a frozen modules page. Well, it'll be a frozen modules section that you can still link directly to. Um, so I will, Naradoc, I will let you know when that guide page is ready to go and you can link to it. And that's what I've got. Thank you. Uh, Maker Melissa is up now, and then after that, it is Tammy Makes Things. Hello. Uh, so last week I w attended, uh, I was still at PyCon US uh, 2022, and I helped Katni with running the open spaces and the development sprints. And I also learned a lot of useful things that will hopefully apply during the next year. And I fixed a couple missing boards on circuitpython.org. I updated the bootloaders on a bunch of boards on the circuitpython.org as well. I updated the logging library to uh, now upload to PyPI and updated the Azure IoT library to use logging as a dependency. I tested Blinka on the Raspberry Pi running MicroPython for speed and attempted to optimize, but the changes weren't anything noticeable. Uh, so uh, I just ended up closing that issue. Uh, I tested and updated e-ink guides uh, to mention that only 24-bit uh, bit bitmaps um, can be used. And I tested out the 2.13 inch e ink bonnet and updated the guide for that. And I finally replaced the bulging battery in my laptop. And this week I uh, am testing, I tested out uh, several pull requests. I might have some more also. And possibly working on uh, a Pi Portal or actually Matrix Portal requests issues. Uh, possibly working on fixing. Uh, touch driver, so the PyTFT when running the Vipi driver. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, all right. Scott is on deck, but now it's Tammy Makes Things. Thanks. So last week I had one Twitch stream. I had a second stream that I was hoping to do that I had to cancel because I was having some back problems that day, unfortunately. Um, but I finished up the core card and deck functionality of my um, Display I.O. card deck library. Um, so this week I'm continuing with that and actually getting into the how do we draw cards on a screen part of the code, um, figuring out how I want that to work. Hopefully I'm going to do two Twitch streams. I'm hopefully also going to get a chance to do some um, PR reviews and or some more of the typing hints, PRs, and trying to figure out what a regular schedule for working on CircuitPython stuff will look like now that I've got a better handle on what my schedule looks like in my new job. And that's what I got. Great. Thank you. All right. Next is Scott. And then I'll round out the section by reading notes from Tectric. All right, hello. Um, that, Tammy saying figuring out new schedule sounds very, very relevant to me uh, or very familiar to me because last six weeks uh, we had a kid. Uh, baby was born 325, which is a Friday, so it's just over six weeks. Um, so lots of diapers, lots of burping, lots of soothing the baby, and lots of love from family and the baby. 
so this week, still lots of baby time. Uh, Becca was out this weekend, so we're... This is the first week. We, I don't know exactly what the schedule will be. I got like five hours of sleep last night, so brain is not not what it used to be. Um, in terms of leave, I will be taking 12 more weeks of leave kind of in mid-August um, when Becca goes back to work. So uh, you have me for a while, so feel free to ping me. Um, I may not be around, uh, but I'll, I'll be trying to be responsive and, and communicate whether I'm around or not and stuff like that. So I'm ramping back up. Um, let me know what things are high, high priority for you. I'm not going back through the Discord history or the Slack history. I'm going to try to get through the forum and I think email. I'm going to try to just glance through everything. Um, but if there's anything urgent that I may have missed, please just bring it up to me again. And uh, the thing that Lamour uh, is on her radar is uh, the NTP library for CircuitPython is, is a weird one because it uses something from the ESP32 spy library. Uh, whereas um, I actually made a version that works with native sockets. So uh, I'll be doing the legwork uh, to actually get that checked in, um, which involves like checking things that use the, the, the older version, the older functionality of it too. So. I'm going to have to run that down, and that's kind of the, the work that I'll start to pick up this week. Um, and in addition to being caught up, I think that's the gist. Do I sound like I haven't had enough sleep? <laughs> All right, Scott, we know you'll muddle through. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get better and better, and like the kids, as they get older, they get more regular schedules and stuff too. So yeah, it'll just get better and better. All right. And to finish things out, I have notes from Tectric. Last week was reviewing PyCon PRs, working on a script to standardize the pre-commit config.yaml files in the libraries, both content and formatting, adding more links to tutorials, guides, and related reading to the documentation pages for the CircuitPython core modules. Thanks for picking that up, Jeff says, uh, and ordered the PCB for my auto lighting menorah. This week, Continuing to refactor the ATECC library, now I have hardware to test. Adding more protocols to CircuitPython typing to aid in type libraries. Confirming the pre-commit config.yaml script is good to go, and then patching the libraries. And maybe it's worth a discussion, since it's been recently made available on PyPI. Should Adafruit logging be made a true subset of CPython's logging? Looking into the differences this week, at least. And that finishes up. Um, status updates. For In the Weeds, nobody has furnished any topics, and that means that we can wrap up the meeting today. So a big thanks to everybody who was able to join us for uh, the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting on May 9th, 2022. And I just need to tab back to my other notes to see what else I say. Speaking of people who are totally up to speed and not sleep deprived. Um, so, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, like Scott and Scott's baby, uh, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, and I believe the date on that will be May 16. No, yes, May 16. Um, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonista's role on Discord. Although adding our calendar is also a great way to just view that within your normal calendar application. Uh, anyway, we hope to see you all next week. So thank you everybody who joined us and everybody who's listening after the fact. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.